video we're going to be talking about NIC teaming and virtual switches as they pertain to Hyper-V networking. We'll be talking you through how you can make the best of the available NICs that you have whilst increasing bandwidth. In the traditional Hyper-V module, model we'd be assigning different NICs to different traffic types such as management, cluster heartbeat, CSV etc. And we'd do this to guarantee that bandwidth was available to each of the networks when it needed it. So we'd have a couple of NICs assigned to management. I say a couple because we'd want to team them together to make sure that the network was highly available. We'd separate out the cluster heartbeat, the CSV, live migration. We'd provide network interface cards and some bandwidth for users to connect into virtual machines. And we'd even have network cards, not necessarily teamed together, but maybe presented by MPIO, um, for iSCSI or connecting to a fiber channel SAN in order for virtual machines to sit hard disk to sit on external storage. As you can see, this takes quite a few NICs, quite a few ports in our data center, quite a bit of configuration, quite a bit of management. The choice that you do have in a more modern world is to use converged networking, where we use fewer NICs, but split up the bandwidth available on those NICs to the host operating system and to the virtual machines. For example, you may be using physical 10 gig cards and those cards may allow us to split the network up at the physical card level and assign quality to your service. If you've bought the wrong cards, you may not be able to do this as you may only have 10 gig cards or indeed if you just have a one gig network, then you face a choice of either using lots and lots of ports or you can bond those cards together into a large team with more than two NICs and then split up that pool of bandwidth between the networks such as management, cluster heartbeat, CSV and live migration. Uh -huh. With Windows Server 2012 R2 you can also assign quality service policies to those networks to guarantee them either a minimum or a maximum amount of bandwidth and control the data flow through the networks. So let's go and have a look in the lab. As you can see in the lab, I have three network cards configured, one for the LAN, one for CSV and cluster, one for live migration. There's an extra VE net card, and that's there because my Hyper-V switch manager is shared with my management layer. Over in Fairlove Cluster Manager, you can see that we have three networks configured, one for each network. We only have LAN, live migration, and CSV cluster matching the three network cards that we have and the three subnets that we are using 192.168.1, 2 and 3. So what I'd like to do is recover these network cards and team them together and then present those up to a virtual switch and from there create virtual networks for our management operating system to use. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll remove any network information from these network interfaces. So we'll take that out and from the live migration we'll remove the information there. Obviously this needs a bit of planning if you're going to be do, doing this in production. We'll then rename these to Team Nick 1 or whatever naming convention you would like to use in your environment for identifying the different NIC team members. Uh, let's rename that to Team NIC 2. Okay, and so now I have two NICs free to create as a team. If we access Server Manager, See that Nick team is currently disabled and there are no teams there. I can select the two Nicks and from there we could add to a new team. And if we look at the additional properties, we'll see that we have some selections that we can make. Our teaming mode can be swi static teaming, switch independent or lack P. Our load balancing mode can use address hash, Hyper-V port or dynamic and we can select to use a standby adapter. In the lab we have our three network cards as we said, LAN, 
team nick one team nick two and i'm going to create a team and i could come in select the two nicks that i want to be in my team and then create a new team but this is the brave new world where we use PowerShell to automate tasks and the reason we use PowerShell quite frankly is if you're building more than one server then errors can creep in if you're performing tasks manually so it's quicker and more certain if you use PowerShell so that you'll carry out the same steps exactly on each server. So hopping into PowerShell we can um, type in get net adapter and that will list our adapters and we should see our renamed adapters team nick one team nick two sitting there so i could have used if i had liked um rename net adapter and the one called let's say for example team nick two and i could have team nick2 and we could have named that my new name and if we press return go back and refresh our interface then we'll see that nick is instantly renamed so let's turn those around my new name back to team nick2 my new name rename that back to team nick2 come back refresh the screen and hey presto changeo and nick's are named as they should be so let's create that new load balancing failover team so new net load balancing failover team and we'll give it a name and the name that we will give this is management team management team and the team members so if i press tab it will auto complete the entries for me so that will be team nick one and team nick two the teaming mode that I'll put them into is switch independent and the load balancing algorithm if you remember the load balancing algorithm choices that we had were address hash hyper-v mode or dynamic so I'm going to follow the current best practice the new best practice and load balance them dynamically and because I don't want the message saying do you really want to do this I will put confirm false and that will create a new team and in the background you see the networks re the next reconverging and the management team created and if we wait there then that Nick should eventually reconverge and appear for us while we're waiting for that we'll move on so we have a a new network created a new team created but in our hyper-v we still only have the one switch so what we do next after creating the team is we'll create a new virtual machine switch which we'll call our converged network switch and our minimum bandwidth mode will be based on weight and our net adapter name that we will connect that to is our management team the network card that we just created the network team card that we just created and I don't want to connect that up to our management interface so if I press return now that should go away and create a new switch for me so if I go back into my switch manager there's my new switch and note that we're not connected to the management network and whilst I entered in 
the name of the network that I wanted to connect to, the management team name of the NIC. It's connected me up to the correct one of my drop one of my correct one of my cards. So at the moment we have a team and we have a virtual switch, but what we don't have are any additional networks. So let's create those. The command we enter here would be to add a new VM network adapter. And I'm going to add that in the management OS. And I'm going to call that live migration. And I'm going to hook that up to my switch named converged Converge that switch. And immediately in the background, you see live migration being created. I'm then going to add a new network adapter, and this one I'm going to name uh, cluster CSV, so slightly different from our previous one which had a space and a hyphen, but that's because it makes coding so much easier. In fact, what I will do is I will have a cluster network. And there's my one for cluster communications. And then I can have a CSV network. And so what you can see, whereas before we only had two networks running over these two network cards, we now have three networks running over the two network cards. So that's created an interface for us. And on those, you'll notice that the settings and properties are very much the same as for a standard card. And we could now go back in and add in our addresses. So let's quickly do that and say that our live migration We'll give back its original address, 192.168.3.3. And our cluster communications, sorry, our CSV, will give the original address that that had. which is 192.168.2.2. And then what we'll do is we'd create a new VLAN on our switch. One nine two one six eight four dot four. take those out and now we have three networks but what they'll all do is try and use all of our bandwidth so what we'll do now is we'll add quality of service to each of those networks that we've created so if we set our VM network adapter um, in the management OS the one named live migration uh, and minimum bandwidth by weight. So we have absolute and we have weight. Absolute will set an absolute minimum bandwidth. Uh, weight will give a weighting value. If those values all add up to 100, then you can think of it as being a minimum percentage of the available bandwidth. So let's, for our live migration, give it a value of know 30 and if more than 30 percent is available then the network will use it but if that's all that's available then that's all they'll use so we'll give 20 percent to our cluster communications and then if our csv needs to be running its vms across the network or controlling the CSVs 
across the network, then we'll give that half of the bandwidth that we have available to us. And say if more than that is available, then it will use more. And, and now we've applied quads to our settings. So if you remember at the start of our time in the lab, we only had these three NICs available to us, could only do three networks. And we still have the three NICs available to us, but we now have an additional network running through there. So we have four networks back in our sw converged switch. You see that we are sharing the networks with the management, the switch with the management layer. But as you can see, that's all grayed out. We can't change it because that's been done at a very much lower level. I hope you've enjoyed watching this and look forward to seeing you in our next video.